and welcome to our third episode of Three Question Thursdays. Most of us are concerned about the rapidly changing economic conditions, the impact of this pandemic, and what it would take to revive a COVID-19 hit economy. So I'm really pleased that we have with us today ANZ's Chief Economist for Southeast Asia and India, Sanjay Mathur. So Sanjay is based in Singapore and at ANZ he is responsible for providing macroeconomic analysis and insight on key Asian markets with a particular focus on Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand and India. So prior to this role, he worked at the Royal Bank of Scotland, Barclays and UBS, where he held a number of senior economist roles. ANZ is a member of the chamber and we're really happy that um, Sanjay could be with us here today. So Sanjay, my first question is, um, most economists are saying that these are the worst statistics since the 1930s with projections of negative growth for developing economies. Um, in your view, um, and with you know, your intensive experience in this area, what impact will COVID-19 have on emerging markets like India and other key Asian markets? So you know, what changes can we expect to see over the rest of this year? Hi, Patela, and thanks for having me over. I think we cannot dispute that. We cannot challenge that notion. This is really the once-in-a-lifetime crisis. Uh, for some, it's probably never happened in their lifetimes. And I think a good starting point would be to sort of look at what growth the IMF is projecting for emerging markets as a whole. They're talking a 1% growth this year. And that includes a lot of economies that were considered to be safe, you know, China, India, large economies who are able to withstand many shocks. And that's not happening. Second, if you look at one of the interesting observations uh, that you can make from the IMF World Economic Outlook, is close to 80% of the world will actually see their per capita income fall this year. That does not happen often. So we have a pretty severe situation here. Now, I think it's important to understand three or four things that are going to drive our growth or not drive it as you like this year. Uh, the first is global trade is really going to drop. And we have some early readings for the month of March and April and global trade is down by more than 20%. It does hurt emerging markets. The second is social containment policies. We've seen the lockdown in India. We've seen it in a number of emerging markets. And Apart from the fact that economic activity comes to a halt and basically the economy is operating at zero at that point in time, I think it's important to bear in mind that social containment basically means your services sector doesn't work. There are only an X amount of services that you can really do through online. So that's a second challenge. The third is that globally funding has become very difficult. Uh, you can even see that in India. You look at, say, bond deals or corporate bond deals. Uh, there's no inflow of foreign money. So despite RBI's best efforts, bond deals are still going up. So there's a very distinct change in all of these. And so this is going to be a long-lasting impact. And one of the things to keep in mind is that when you have social distancing, it changes behavioral attitudes. So it's not as if COVID goes away and everyone hops onto a plane and goes on a holiday. It doesn't happen year, year and a half. Now, coming to India specifically, and let me throw some numbers. We still have positive growth, 1.6%, but the risks are clearly to the downside right now. Uh, we've seen the economy that's going to be under lockdown for 45 days. Second challenge in India is that where you are seeing the outbreak of COVID, really invested in India, etc. These are really the producing parts of the economy, and they are now under lockdown. Uh, the third is that people aren't moving. Uh, we don't have the fiscal resources to effectively deal with such a crisis. So net net, I think we are in for a much, much weaker gro uh, growth scenario. Great. So Sanjay, you kind of, you know, mentioned the lockdown and uh, we, you know, the various effects that it's been having on the economy. Um, what do you think are some of the transitioning steps that India and businesses as well could take to address this economic crisis? Um, you know, it's affecting uh, some sectors and industries. Um, 
more. Uh, they're a lot more vulnerable than others. So what should, um, you know, as a country as well as businesses be doing as next steps to kind of um, improve this? Well, the immediate challenge is ready to get through. But it is probably true that business will have to be open in sort of gradually. And there's nothing you can really do about that. Um, you know, we have to make a choice to some extent between lives and livelihoods, as everyone has started to say. And that can only be a choice if you want to make them not, if you don't want to make them mutually exclusive events, you have to go slowly in each direction. But one of the things that I feel is this is the time, regardless of how tight the fiscal position is, we really need a big fiscal stimulus, perhaps a once in a lifetime stimulus. Uh, that should be really dealt at things like Emneriga, at helping lower income groups, people who've lost their jobs. Um, and a good statistic is the CMI number that's come out that our unemployment is now at 27%. The other thing which I think is missing so far, and it's really hard to explain why, we can only have some reasons for it, is that Whereas the RBI has taken several steps to support the corporate sector, SMEs, etc., it is not clear as to why they are telling that the entire dispersal of funds is via banks. Because you think about the bank, it's okay to give out the funds, but the credit risk is also being borne by the banks. Therefore, they are not lending. Someone in the government, either the government or the central bank, now has to bear this risk. So if you get a combination of a large stimulus, which also allows for backing of corporates by either the RBI or the government, I think that would be quite effective. The third is, of course, businesses themselves have to transform. They have to understand that digital technology is here to stay. It is really a growth accelerator. We have to do with minimal, uh, with minimal human interface, at least for a prolonged period of and that is a time when, you know, it will cause a lot of problems for the economy, but that is where the social safety net has to be enhanced. Um, you know, so you kind of spoke a bit about the fiscal stimulus packages. Uh, what are your views on, you know, some of the concerns on India's uh, fiscal discipline and the def deficit? Um, you know, how worried would you be uh, about this at this point? Well, I would be worried. Uh, there's no doubt about it that India's fiscal situation was a cause of concern even prior to the outbreak of COVID. And associated with that has been the problems in the financial sector. So you do have that. And, you know, together they were causing very weak growth. And that in turn made the fiscal deficit even bigger than where it should have been. And that said, this really is not a time to think about the deficit itself. Uh, this is a humanitarian crisis, this is an economic crisis, so we really shouldn't be thinking about this. And let's go with 5 to 6 percent of GDP this time. Because if you don't, the economy slows down. That is also going to widen the deficit, perhaps for a longer period of time. Now, I do understand that all this would sort of cause investor concerns, etc., mm -hmm. that, you know, we've let the deficit explode. And I think a significant sort of... Uh, a uh, number of uh, experts have weighed in on the subject. Now, I think the trick to this, however, is that you have to communicate that, look, we are going to do it for a finite period of time and define what that finite is. On the assumption that the COVID outbreak would have completely gone, say, in six months, in a year's time, and thereafter, we will have a massive cutback in spending and try and come back to normal. Now, this did not happen after the global financial crisis. It took years for us to bring fiscal discipline back to the table. And that is the difference that the government has to make this time. A firm commitment to withdrawing that stimulus. And I think then we should be fairly safe. That people will understand, investors will understand, this is a one-off. Great. Okay. So that's, uh, the, we come to the end of the interview. Uh, thank you so much, um, Sanjay. Some really great insights and uh, fantastic to have someone, um, you know, with such extensive economic experience as yourself with us uh, today. Um, thank you. I'm sure our members found that really, really useful. And um, thank you to all those who are watching this. And um, I'll say bye until next Thursday and we'll see you then. Have a great day.
Bye, everyone. Thank you, Thank you Sanjay. Thank you.